Hey everybody, looks like we made it to yet another Wednesday. It's so good to see you. Thank you so much for coming by. Willie, how's it going? Good to see you, my friend. Always a pleasure. Always great when Willie's here. I know things are good. How you feeling, my friend? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my videos over here and see if I can see this on the big screen here. Yep, there we are. So that's a good thing. Let me mute this so if anyone tries to text me or what have you, you guys aren't hearing it. <laughs> I know, Willie, every day seems to blend into another. Doesn't it seem that way, my friend? I tell you, that's how it definitely seems with me. I know it was Wednesday or Thursday or God knows what day, right? So, definitely. So I'm going to go to my videos here. And we're your videos, okay? So I can see you guys on several screens. So that's good. So part six, we're up and running. And I can also see the chat. Make sure everything is working. Hey, Wendy, good to see you. How are you? I'm so glad you're here. So that's exciting. Both, both Wendy and, and, and Willie are here. So we got the W's. We need a William. So... <laughs> So as long as we get the W's, we're okay. Hey, Rick, happy Wednesday. I'm so glad you're here, my friend. How you been? So, you know, we got Rick in the house, and that's that makes me happy, and Wendy, so, and Willie. So right now we're doing really well. I think the picture's a little dark. Let's give it a light. There we go, lighten it up just a tad. I think we might finish this tonight. I don't know, and we can... Start on the next one coming up. Uh, it's interesting how different works always have their own flavor, right? Different, every live stream that we do as far as a project in a live stream, you know, it, they always have their flavor, you know, and it's pretty interesting. So with this one, we were sort of playing with the moisture in the eyes, you know. One of the things that I want to talk about briefly is that when we're painting things, I included tend to shy away from things that seem hard. Even when we paint subjects, we'll shy away from that. And I think it's important for us to attack them, you know? Yes, Wendy, where is that cake? <laughs> it's important to attack. Hey John, good to see you. I'm so glad you're here my friend. How are you? Uh, now John, was it your anniversary that just passed? If I did, if I'm correct that I've seen that on Facebook and if I did, a very happy anniversary my friend. So yeah, so one of the things I want us to do and I want me to do too is to attack the hard stuff, right? So case in point, here's this uh, painting I'm working on. Uh, it's of, uh, well, I, I, I get, uh, Veronica Lake. And so there's a lot going on here in the dress, and I was going to just leave it alone. 30 years, that's so cool. Congratulations. That is wonderful and goes to show you that marriage can work. So that's so cool to see, John. And I, I wish you guys 30 more years of wedded bliss. And so that makes me happy. Tone, happy birthday. Tone's birthday was the other day. He turned 28, I think, or something like that. Is that right, Tone? 28 or is it 27? <laughs> and uh, so, so there's like this really sequent thing going on here in her dress. So I'm going to attack that. You know, maybe old Tim might have left it alone with just, uh, you know, just with, you know, some nice value work and everything. But I'm really going to get involved and get, I'm going to do everything because I'm not going to let anything in a painting intimidate me. And what I find is sometimes, most of the time, the things that was, that seem so difficult have become so easy to paint. So... Uh, give that a try. Uh, don't let the uh, scary, don't let the scary details chase you away. Go and attack it, my friends. That's what I plan on doing myself. 
28 times 2 plus 1. That's too much math for me. I'm going to have to get back to you on that there, Tone. <laughs> uh, well, you look young, and that's all that matters. It's better to look good than to feel good. That's what uh, Billy Crystal used to say on, on uh, Saturday Night Live. I don't know if you remember that years ago. So I think I have the dark mixture in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, reiterate some of these darks here. Uh, just right over here. It's going to come in with some darks here. And of course the airbrush I'm using is the Extreme Patriot Arrow by Badger. And the inks that I'm using are my ink mixtures where you can purchase them in the link in the description. They give your airbrush more control. You don't have to worry about dilutions. I dilute it for you. And also it gives you a pragmatic approach to painting a portrait as you see in my videos here. So all those different things are really good reasons to go ahead and pick you up some of my inks. And the link is in the description. And I ship all over the world, not just in the U.S. So, getting back to our portrait, let me warm up this picture a little bit. It seems a little cold. What do you think uh, as far as the temperature here? So, let's see if I could warm her up just a little bit. That's a little too much, right? Oh, boy. Okay. Let's go back this other direction here. Hmm. That's probably the best I'm going to get it, right? Maybe just a tad bit lighter. Okay. That's the best I'm going to get it. So, you know, it's okay. All right. Let's go ahead and... <laughs> Wendy said she likes her pink. That's going to be for uh, the next next one. I'll do a pink... Uh, I'll work on pink paper for you, Wendy. And I'll make pink inks and... Oh, pink inks. That's hard to say, guys. Don't try that. Don't try and say pink inks uh, ten times fast. So what I'm doing is just reiterating some of the darks. <laughs> I know you do. I remember when you ordered that a long time ago at the Canford Cardstock. Oh, great question, John. A4, uh, that's the UK, uh, the European designation for it. It's 8.5 by 11. Uh, it's pretty standard. It's not standard as far as frames go. I usually have my, my, my mats cut, uh, you know, custom because it's not 8 by 10 or 11 by 14. But I do like the ratio of 8.5 by 11. Uh, seems to be my sweet spot. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm going to go with that. So, <laughs> so you're going to paint girly pictures, huh, Wendy? Okay, let's see. I can't say that because I get in trouble for saying that, but you're a girl. You can say that. And so... Using frisket is wonderful, right? Yay, frisket, right? But there are some disadvantages to frisket, as you know. And I'll point one out, is that you're going to have some wicked edges. And it's going to be our job trying to get rid of that edge. You know, where the ink sort of uh, collects right on the edge of the cut, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to try and... <laughs> well, I appreciate that, my friend. I don't know how much free speech we have anymore. There we 
go. So you see, see how it had that little bit of an edge that was because of the uh, cut or the incised cut. So, you know, go ahead and work, play with it, and try and get that. You know, that's really important because this is the cleanup work. This is when it's time to clean things up. You know, and I do see right here that this edge comes up a little bit of more strongly and sort of continues up and I think it also softens her up a little bit you know I did do some airbrushing earlier today which was good and always feels wonderful So anyone working on a project have any questions about airbrushing? You know, it doesn't have to pertain to this piece, you know. I'd love to hear or answer any questions, sort of like a airbrush forum, so to speak. That would be cool. You know, within my own realm of expertise, of course. And so let me go ahead, pull up, turn up the air conditioner. It's a little warm, you know. Okay, so I'm going to go back here and we are now she does have a little bit of a light there underneath her chin so let's see if we can make this happen. Last night on the live on the live stream, I think I did something. Was it last night or the night before? I did something on the live stream, but that was uh, a different painting. This is last month, uh, last week's, uh, Wendy. Ah, uh, you see now we can definitely see that we have to paint this part of her lips right here. And do that one second rule. Sort of bring those lips and also get rid of some of these uh, some of these lines here. You see how it's looking like a wolverine on her, her mouth there? So you know you want to be hard on yourself just as if you were hard on your students and your students should expect that from you and and also we should have that same kind uh, no I wouldn't say maybe uh, at least another two or three hours, Wendy, but we got some time on this, definitely. Um, remember, a painting's never finished, it's only abandoned. And let's see here. So go ahead guys, when you get a chance, hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. This way you'll be alerted when new stuff is coming. I got a lot of really cool videos coming on a lot of different topics pertaining to airbrush painters, as well as uh, starting to do some digital videos that are in the works. I'm not sure if it's gonna be a separate channel or this, uh, this channel. So that's pretty exciting. And so we have the under part of her eyelid, right? Which is very interesting. So what we're going to do, let's see if we can move over here. Let's see how this works out for us today. There we go. Now, looking at the reference, we have something very interesting is that the, we're seeing the under part of that eyelid, you know, 
It's not, it's very different. It's not, uh, you know, your normal viewpoint. And you see, we have to express that. There's no way around it. And it's important that we express that. And because that is what really makes this portrait special, I feel, are her eyes. So if we were to, let's say, you know, not do the eyes because, uh, you know, this part of the eyes because we were afraid of it, that would definitely be an issue right so just let's be mindful to attack it right that's really important okay so let's see if we can go back in here This is all very subtle value changes. That's why when we blow it up, we don't see much difference. Now I do have some black or a dark mixture uh, in this other Extreme Patriot Arrow. Dueling Patriot, like, Dueling Extreme Patriot Arrows, guys. Okay. So, you know, we got to make sure we don't spider, but it's not the end of the world if you do spider, okay? So, doing that one second rule, making sure. Indicate a few eyelashes. Just indications. So remember distance and air pressure are really important and remember don't try don't think we're gonna get smooth uh, get anything smooth when you're close distance I don't care if you're Houdini we're not gonna get smooth gradations when we're this close this close is explicitly for detail okay so always remember that close is for detail so you wouldn't do anything that calls for uh, smooth gradations here. So how I do, let's say, this is a good thing. So, okay, so what's a good way to attack eyelashes? What I do is I first do a dot and then I go up. Just like that. Same thing with dot and then go up. But first, establish that dot, okay? First, establish that dot. Okay, so maybe we could reiterate some of those eyelashes with a dark mixture uh, in my other Extreme Patriot Arrow by Badger. One of the reasons why you don't get spidering is because you don't want to stay in the same spot for more than a few moments 
Because when you stay and think about it, if you're pouring water into the same cup and uh, you just leave the faucet in that same cup, you don't move the cup, it's going to overflow. Think of like that with the airbrush. So if you're just going to touch that area and then move on, what's happening is you're not going to get that spidering or you're not going to get it as much. It's, it's not a magic cure for it, but you're going to have a lot less of it. some of this in here. There we go. Like I said, when we work small, you know, things are going to appear like, uh, you know, they're going to appear to be messy, but it's not. So let's let us move on to the other eye and see how this is going. Okay, or let's blow out blow up first There we go. So you see we put a little more detail there. You know, we can see maybe You know, we got a little overzealous here. That's okay um, And now whatever we do on one eye we can go ahead and work on the other eye And let's see how we could, you know, just put a little more detail in there or, you know, work in there. Let's see. So we'll come in first with the light mixture. And let's establish some of that, some of those lights under the eyelid there. And let's carve out some of the lights that are in the lower eyelid there. So at this point you're using a variety of tools just to clean up and put in some detail. So we're in the light mixture. So what we're going to do is see if we can carve out some detail first and then reiterate some detail with the light mixture and if we have to go darker we will. And we have to, I have to worry about not getting too involved in the darks, right? I mean, too involved in the, the details, right? I don't want to. That's a trap, and I definitely don't want to show you guys that. Because I want you to always see the ensemble. want to make sure that we are working on, you know, the adjacent values, like right here. It's really soft and it's a wide, uh, more gradated shape, so you want to use a, an eraser that has a larger surface texture. trouble getting getting lighter with the kneaded eraser then progressively go harder until you get the you know the detail that you're looking for also I do see a little bit of light here on the top of the eyelashes where the eyelid is on top of
Hey, Mike, good to see you. How are you today? And Mike says, is there any reason why you're working it laying down and not standing on the easel? Good question, Mike. Definitely because of, uh, you know, helping you guys out and seeing, uh, you know, seeing the uh, picture this well, you know. So that's how I started. And I've come to like it, Mike, believe it or not. So Willie says, Tim, do you ever think it's necessary to dilute the light mixture? You know, I have a friend who actually diluted the light mixture, and they said they have, they got even more detail. I personally don't think so, but I think you could give it a try, right? Because it might work for you. Uh, just, you know, if you go too much, then you're going to get a little bit of weirdness with the way that it actually adheres to the paper. But yeah, give it a try, right? See if it if it works. If it gives you a little more control like it did with him I think that's a good thing all around so you see right here I probably went a little too overzealous in that dark so I can calm that down on the edge is just a little bit darker so I'm gonna try and get that see that I just got that little bit of a dark right there Now, the Extreme Patriot Arrow is really fantastic. Those of you who have one, now this eyeball is like an inch big. And I'm getting this kind of detail with that. And uh, so it really is amazing. So remember, don't stay in the same spot. And that's how you escape getting any kind of spidering. Uh, or maybe even lower the instance instance of spidering. And, you know, always look and see, especially this stage of the game, where did we get overzealous, you know? That's the thing. Uh, Mike says, uh, you ever drop some ink from the airbrush? It's just making my heart ache watching you tilt the airbrush. That is so true, Mike. You never see me without this cover because <laughs> I have done it uh, with, uh, with side feeds because side feeds are a little precarious. So you don't see me using too many side feeds when I'm working, uh, you know, this way. So it's true. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, definitely, Mike, you, uh, you hit the nail on the head with that one. That's for sure. And so Mike says, looks cool. He always enjoys my art when it's finished. Good job. Still make him nervous. <laughs> uh, I'll keep that. I'll keep these uh, caps tight for you, sir. But I appreciate that. Now, I think I went a little overzealous in the, uh, over here. And let's see. So this is a good time to really make sure and put all our ducks in a row sort of thing. Now, we do have the light mixture, and the light mixture is our secret weapon. Not the light mixture, but our white pastel. That's what separates us from everyone out there. So let's go ahead and make this happen. There we go. And so we can go ahead and come out there and we can see we put in a little more detail now also we can look and we can decide whether we have enough detail or too much detail that's always up to us you know so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that executive decision and I'm going to say yes too much detail over on this side of the eye so let's calm this down so I'm going to dust I'm going to be about two to three inches away I'm going to dust that eye and I think we don't need the white over here as much. 
and let's see if we can just dust this down a little bit. There we go. Because this eye is in shadow, so I want it to calm down. I don't want it to be uh, competing with the eye that's not in shadow because, of course, there has to be more detail and more light going on on this side. And we also have to have a place to direct the viewer's eye, so we don't want to lose that, you know? <laughs> Thanks, Mike. And uh, I appreciate that. So Mike S is here. How's it going? So we have Mike's brush and Mike S. So that's cool. So very, very cool to see you guys. And we're just going to move around. I just want to make sure that I'm happy with the way that the values are coming together. See, right here, I went a little crazy with this dark here. A little crazy. That happens, guys. Much better. And we can just calm this down. Little little overzealous. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can clean up her, uh, this area over here. Oh, well, I, that's so cool. So, uh, uh, Mike S. says, hey, Tim, why is there still a hard pencil lying on the left side of the image? Uh, that is, uh, well, it might be just the way the light's hitting it, but on the original artwork, there isn't. But remember, we use friskets, so on certain lighting situations, you may see that. But we still have some cleanup work to do here, that's for sure. Now, of course, when you, when you do go ahead and, uh, you know, work and you see things videotaped, it's gonna look a lot different than it does in real life. Or actually, you know, looking at the artwork right here. So, so okay, so let's address that. So I wasn't gonna address it just yet, but let's go ahead and make that happen. So the first thing we have to do is realize that when we do do that, there are some instances of that, almost always. And what we're going to do is we're just going to lightly, ever so lightly, we're going to try and get rid of that. Just like so. Now what our job is, uh, lighting, you're right, Mike, that the lighting is, is really rough and you know especially you know lighting artwork it's not easy so you know so right now we're just really right now what I'm actually uh, depending on is my aim and also reference Remember, you're always going to watch your reference. Reference is the most important thing when painting. Someone would say to me, well, Tim, imagination is more important. Imagination is important when you're working out your composition. Imagination is not important when you are doing the uh, nuts and bolts of a painting. So, I will go head to head with that argument. If anyone wants to argue that with me, I'll be more than happy to. Imagination. You should not even think about imagination when you're painting. It's all about working. Now, imagination is important when you're working out your idea and your composition and your lighting and all that. Yes. But when it comes to, you know, when you're 
you know, tires hit the road uh, kind of uh, working, imagination has nothing to do with it. And Mike has said, Mike's brush says it's either too much or too little. <laughs> Find the sweet spot. Yeah, you're so right, Mike. It's very true. And now we're just going to, we're going to try and just get rid of anything that's a little bit darker. I'm not going to get fixated on the area. We can come back to it. But don't get fixated on an area. If it doesn't work out right away, you come back to it. Remember, if you want something smooth, you go further away. If you want to do detail, you go up close. I don't know why airbrush teachers aren't teaching that, but I never hear them say that. All right, so now we're gonna work on the dark underneath her chin. We're gonna move around. Pull this up a little darker. See, I'm a good four inches away right now. And you see how I just pulled that up? Let me see if I, I'll be right back. Alrighty. Now, let me get some tea. I had some uh, orange tea today. A little interesting. Now I know why orange is not usually a tea flavor. <laughs> so Mike says, already looks good. Uh, very interesting technique. Enjoy the rest of your stream. Thanks, Mike, for stopping by. It's always a pleasure. Really appreciate it, my friend. And thank you for the kind words. All right, so let's go ahead and work on her mouth. Let's see. And what we want to do is just try and clean things up as much as possible. But there are no hard edges here. So what I want you to always realize is that, you know, yes, it's a mouth, but it's not always delineated, right? A lot of times it's very wispy and has no detail whatsoever. And I want us to really, really feel that. So I'm just going to put in some of that reflected light going on here. And the reflected light only works when you have some darker lights, or darker darks, under here. And I'm in my light mixture right now because I need detail. You don't have as much detail in the dark mixture or medium mixture than you have as, as you do in the light mixture. I can set up the dark mixture by uh, putting in some detail with the light mixture. See that? So now I can come to my other extreme Patriot arrow. There we go. So you see how it's all setting up. And let's do the same on this side. 
So as you as you see, it's really so important to uh, first come in with the dark mixture, with the light mixture. And that will help us in our aim and also help us to know where we want to go. Work on some of the shape of her mouth here. What I'm finding is, is that on the edge where the lips actually meet the, the skin, it's very, very soft. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get that softness. I'm seeing in the reference that this sort of uh, value comes all the way down to the corner of her mouth. But I just have to get that softness here. And trying to get these value changes are not easy. Same thing here. I don't want to get too crazy with the values. And let's go back with the dark mixture and see if we could just go ahead and put in some of those darks a little more forcefully. Let that dry before I do anything. Okay. And let's see if we could zoom out just a little bit and see where we are. Okay. So we do have to work just a little bit on this tooth right there. There we go. Nothing the eraser can't handle. There we go. do now is we want to go ahead and uh, calm down this value but we want to establish the shape so shape is much more important than value so now we can come in with the light mixture once again and let's calm down this value here and also I think I went a little bit crazy here. There we go. And let's work in that as well. Always do the one second rule. That's always going to be your best friend. So, uh, now, Willie says the piece from the last five live streams sell. That was, which one was that, my friend? Oh, yes, that one did when she had her arms up in the air.
Yes, that one did, my friend. in and dust over everything just to bring those lips a little bit forward there we go okay so now let's see what else we can do and I think what we can do over here is probably work on the reflected light underneath her chin here There we go. There, just like so. And let's use our freehand shield and let's get a really nice hard edge here. Now over here we have a nice hard edge going on on the inside of her chin. So let's see if we can make that happen. Perpendicular and not parallel. Now it does disappear as it gets closer to her chin. There we go. And it does disappear a little bit as it gets to her ear, so let's make sure we address that. There we go. There's a little dark spot right there, so you can just, when that happens, you can just try and flick that away. And over here, let's look at this edge here on the, the left side, right over here where we have our top of her cheekbone. Let's see if we could clean things up a little bit. I'm sorry about that, Willie. Go. Now, if I squint my eyes and I want you to squint your eyes, you definitely can see where, you know, there's very little detail. And then you have to fuzz things up a little bit. And that's what I have to do over here. Just fuzz it up a little bit. Try not to get distracted by too much detail. And to know when you need to calm down the detail. And sort of soften things up.
In the future, if there's anything that you do uh, like, guys, just let me know and I'll hold it for you. I'd be more than happy to. Making sure the work gets, goes to a good home is so important. And I know if Willie, if you had it, it wouldn't be in a good home. Now, on this side, if I look at the picture as a whole, this is the light side, this is the dark side, and I see that this is very light here, but it's much darker on this side. And I have to address that, because if I don't, then the work does not have a feeling that she's in a three-dimensional space, you know what I mean? So that's crucial to really get a feeling of, of, you know, as if she's in our presence or we're in her presence. So always remember that, you know, think about the room she's in and think about how the light from the window perhaps is affecting this part of her forehead, but as a forehead turns, less light's going to be hitting it and we have to paint that accordingly. That's where the imagination comes in when we're painting. Uh, when we actually, you know, compose the painting, you know, in the photography and the digital, uh, you know, before the photography, before we sit down to paint it, you know, changing backgrounds and we putting two figures together, that's where imagination is key. But not so much in the actual painting itself. What I think the best word is for when you were painting is innovation. That should be the word of the day, innovation. Remember, right now I have the light mixture in here. Let's continue with his forehead here. I'm really going to concentrate on that one second rule right now. Oh, man. Now I haven't really come in too much with the dark mixture yet. We still have time. Okay, let's go ahead and start bringing in some of the individual hairs here going into her scalp. Make sure we get the direction. Let me show you. Little dagger strokes.
and we can so you want to construct the hair right we don't want to just do individual hairs we want to keep it keep it moving constructing right now I have the dark mixture here and I'm going to put a couple of dark strands here and there Use all the tools in your arsenal. Meaning, go in and start putting in, but really try and, and understand, you know, what we're doing. Like, really look at what direction the hairs are going. the light mixture. We do like little tiny hairs. Go. So you can repeat this process. And just move on down. Really, so I have my reference blown up pretty high. Let me get rid of these pencil lines a little bit more. So this is a light mixture. Edges are everything, you know, as far as edge work. So important. And then, of course, you come in and you use, you know, just like that. So you see how we can really start bringing in the, the hair and get more specific as far as how the hair is actually, you know, onto the... Oh, so there is a big time delay. Oh, man. Okay, guys, I'm going to give take a very short break. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll be right back. Okay, thanks so much. I'm back, guys. And let's see. So, what we're going to do is we're going to continue working on that forehead, her forehead, because I think the changing that color, the value, and having it turn is so important. So, let's see if I can get 100% happy with that. And, yeah, so you guys had cake while I was gone. Well, that's always good. You know, with the lockdown and everything, we're all out of shape, right? <laughs> I know I am. I have to, I can't wait till the gym opens up. I'm going to be in my hazmat outfit, but I'm going to be working out with weights.
So I'm looking about five inches away, and I'm just going to really make sure I gradate it as it turns, as the forehead turns, okay? So that's something that I'm gonna do. I'm even gonna gradate this light here. And I am at a light mixture, so let's go ahead and make that happen. So what are we at? We at we're at 10.30 now, so that's pretty good. we at the halfway point. So I think this is going to be the final episode of this particular painting. So it's part six, so that's not bad. Six or seven is usually the amount that we go with, right? Now right here, you see, uh, this is a little strong. So let's calm this down. But as I was saying before, we just need to turn. That really works. You know, once we turned her forehead there, it really works. It just, it's that little, little something that gives it some, you know, some feeling of, uh, validity, right? There's a little something that really helps. And I even accentuated a little bit because I wanted to accentuate that turn. This is more of an intimate portrait, so it means to me that I really wanted to give it a sense of space, that we're in the same space as her. Uh, you know, when it comes to emotional portraits like this, which those of you who know my work know that I love it. That's so important. And I think I'm finding more and more that a sense of atmosphere is really important to create a feeling of emotion and intimacy. Willie says he's in the shape around. I'm getting there there, Willie, that's for sure. So I'm hoping that the gym opens up soon. Okay, so that's not bad. So I'm happy with that. Now let's work on some of the hair here. You know, we don't want to just let this go. But the first thing we want to do is get that soft edge there. There's a soft edge quality uh, to her hair as it comes into the scalp. So we definitely want to want to get that. That's important. Same thing with up here. Before I go in there, let's see if we establish that here. Let's do that here. Definitely get that feeling of you know a little shadow that the hair is making on the scalp. And you know the important thing, crucial thing, is to make sure that we don't get fixated on one spot. Paint the ensemble. If it isn't working out right away, come back to it. But it doesn't mean, you know, address it when you can, but know that you have other areas. And sort of like, you know, with a puzzle, you know, uh, the right puzzle won't become uh, apparent until the other pieces are in place. So that's why you don't want to get too fixated in one spot. That's when one could ruin a painting. Okay, so we're going to come in here and we're going to do the same as we did before. We're just going to try and paint in the hair, but doing the one second rule as we do it. So important. All right, so now that we established that, now we can start doing some of the negative spaces in there negative shapes. There we go. And then we can come in with a dark mixture. It's good to have dueling airbrushes, you know, maybe having one light and one with medium mixture or, or vice versa, or, you know, one light and one dark, so you can swing back and forth.
Remember, hair is built up. It's not painted. You have to build it up. And uh, you build it up slowly, and you build it up carefully. But you're not painting individual hairs. You're going for the masses first, and then you get individual. Now, individual, uh, like errant hairs, you're going to go ahead and paint them, yes, like this one right there. See that? And you can do that with the dark mixture. Do that when you have a lot of control. If you don't have control, do that with the, with the rigor brush. It's fine. Uh, you don't get the merit point by not doing it with the airbrush. And you want to soften those edges. So I'm with the dark mixture right now. And what I'm going to do is just try and soften some of these edges here. Now we're in the dark mixture so we can realize that we can do some dark accents here and there. Start, start working on the large shapes a little bit. You know, we were on the small shapes, so we can come back into the large shapes now. So, question of control, right? Airbrush control. Now, I always say that the best control is experience. That's your best tool for control. Meaning airbrush as many hours as you can. You know, just like anything else. The more you do something, the better you get. And the more of a natural feeling you get for, you know, the medium, for the machine, for the paper, for the ink, so on. However, uh, there'll come a time when you will uh, have a lot of hours and you're like, well, now what? And that's when things such as distance and distance from the paper, uh, you know, the amount of pressure, that sort of thing, and the cadence with the airbrush all come into play. But definitely distance is really important. And, you know, play around with distance. Play around, like Willie said earlier, you know, that's a great question. Uh, is it okay to dilute it even more? Yeah, play around with all, all pinks. Play around with their viscosity. Try different things. Uh, I don't recommend doing crazy things like people putting Windex and paints and stuff like that. That just drives me nuts, you know, when I hear that. Floor wax and all this other stuff. We're artists. We work with art supplies, you know. Uh, and you don't know what that's going to do to the paint in the long run. And, uh, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I had that. What if I use, like, linseed oil from a paint store? And you know, it made my paint so darn yellow uh, after, like, a year. And because I didn't use the sun... T uh, the... Uh, I think it was called sun tempered linseed oil or something like that uh you know artist grade linseed oil and i was just using the linseed oil from the paint store and also you know the idea you don't know what it's going to do in three four years so but the experimentation i'm talking about is different mediums and stuff like that nothing that's going to harm your painting you know but definitely try different all always try uh you know different combinations, diluting it more, or stuff like that. That's always very cool. 
Okay, so here we're going to do some errant hairs here. We'll do some with the light mixture and then we'll come in with the dark mixture. And whatever we do on one side, we got to make sure we do on the other. So let's see what's going on here. Okay. <coughs> now, right now, I'm working with the dark mixture. So with the dark mixture, you have a little more leeway. You know, it, <laughs> God bless them, you know, I mean, but artists don't use Windex in their work, you know, and um, I'm sorry, that's just something that, it's not a good idea. It can never be a good idea, you know, doing stuff like that. I mean, I guess maybe you're a custom painter, you don't care what happens to your artwork in 20 years, or I care about what happens to my, I hope my artwork is still here when I'm gone, you know? I hope that, you know, people are enjoying my paintings in a hundred years. Now, if I put Windex in my work, the work's not gonna be here for them to enjoy. And I'll put money on it. And God, God bless them if they do with the next Mona Lisa and they put future floor wax in it, right? Too bad, you know? Uh, that's gonna be it, you know, so, you know, really, there's stuff we can put in there besides floor wax, you know, there is, so. We have to think like artists, because that's what we are. And those guys who are painting cars and everything, they're great artists. They just have to think like artists and, you know, stop going under the sink. Uh, for art supplies. There we go. They're better than that, you know? I mean, they are. They're just these fantastic painters and they're using cleaning, cleaning supplies, you know, on their artwork. Oh my God. And it's no slight to them, like I said, they're great artists, but they really, their artwork does not deserve that. <laughs> Future. <laughs> 
flow wax. Yeah, you know, it really cannot be good archivally and also affecting the... you got to think of archival and also light fastness, you know? And now something like that can just kick the butt of your artwork over time. And what's it going to do? Is it going to become brittle? I mean, can these guys tell me, uh, you know, what's it going to do? Or are they just living for the moment, you know? Like I said, artwork is forever. And if it's great artwork, and I hope they do the next Mona Lisa or the next Guernica or something like that, then yes, I'll be like, oh, but you used... You use fantastic floor cleaner, or or what do you use, Fabuloso, or oh well, we have no idea what that's gonna do. Good luck. Again, I come from a fine art background. I was painting for I'm not gonna say how many years before I picked up an airbrush. So, but let's just say part of my training was working with materials that are going to last and be archival. So that's why my ink mixtures are archival. You paint my ink mixture, they're not going to fade with time. You use bleach. No, you don't, Wendy. What do you use bleach for? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, that would be interesting. Wendy's messing with me. Oh, I see. <laughs> okay. You scared me, Wendy. Yes, it's so true. The art store. I'm going this week. They have curbside pickup, but I need to get that huge thing of gesso. And that's pricey, but we need it. Because, you know, I'm going to gonna start working on a lot more larger paintings this year. God willing. There we go. So you see how I'm just, I'm establishing the hair. But I'm not going crazy with detail, you see? Just a little bit here and there, you know? We don't, we don't have to go nuts. If you look at Rembrandt and the way he paints hair, that's, that's who we need to model our work after. The old masters, they knew. Same thing there, you know, you just... Over here, it's just a little dark. So we want to make sure that we get rid of anything that stands out. That's sort of an incongruency. And you want to fix it. Same thing. So I'm going to look at her bottom lip there. We can calm that down. There we go. And always remember, stay calm whenever something doesn't look right, okay? Assess the situation and then attack it. I think that resolved it. As you see, I'm getting skin texture by bumping the trigger. It's hard to control Indian ink on gesso board. Yes, it is. Uh, now, it's a whole different ball game. You have to lower your air pressure even more, and you have to make sure that you do two things. 
you change your distance and also you don't stay in the same spot more than one fraction of a second so this is on illustrate this is on my gesso board right it's on wood panel so you see uh, there's definitely a different mode of attack now there are some things that I can do with this that I can't do with uh, paper I can scratch with the razor blade I can uh, come in with uh, opaque color if I wanted to I haven't yet but scratching the razor blade and maybe doing some sandpaper here and there actually helps so that's actually pretty cool so yeah there's an advantage in working in bowls so I definitely want you to work in bowls so that's so important so that's something that I'm working on now uh, Darken this up over here. There we go. All right, so now let's go ahead and see if we can do more of the white pastel to bring in some more detail here. So that's funny, uh, Wendy keeps going away. <laughs> yes. But there's some buildup of, of white here and uh, where uh, her features are most facing the light and that's going to receive the most white so remember that it rhymes that's a timism what's most facing the light gets the most white if you can remember that that's going to help you So now what we're doing now are the shapes within the shapes, okay? So it's not just doing the shapes and then the adjacent edges, but now it's the shapes within the shapes. my friend so glad you can make it how's your granddaughter doing I heard she was out of the hospital that makes me feel happy I hope she's continuing getting better
easy with just trying to get those muscles too. And then you can find that there's a lot more going on when you're looking for the light inside the darks. Okay, so you see we can address some some powerful light right here. That's really going to help. dark mixture and calm down this area right here. There we go. So we have the dark mixture in here and let's see where we could just even things out so to speak. This pupil here. I want to make sure we Get that. And let's calm this down here. Just a little bit. Make sure that the star of the show is definitely this eye. So that's where the creativity comes in during the innovation portion. Not the creative portion. But uh Okay, quick question. How many people are in the chat room? We have we have 10 people watching. Okay, those of you who are watching, this is a proposal. Now, I'm doing digital art as it pertains to airbrush artists. You know, how digital art can help airbrush artists. But it's for digital painters and those who are learning the programs. Programs are going to be Krita, Procreate, and Clip Studio Paint. Such things as how to take a regular photograph and get creative with the photograph to, uh, you know, get better edge work and detail where you want it, change the background, stuff like that, before you actually paint your reference. So my proposal is this. Should I do a separate channel? So I'm going to see how many people actually participate in this. Or do I continue it on this channel? As a follower of my channel, do you feel that it goes against uh, the initial uh, sort of guidelines? Do you feel that you you would not be interested in that, or you think it would be better on a different channel? So speak now, guys, or whatever, and ladies, whatever holds your peace. So we'd love to hear. So Wendy said separate. Okay, so we got one separate. Now, would you guys follow me on that other channel? Because I'll do a live stream once a week with the uh, a live stream once a week doing the digital as well. Said separate, okay. Oh, Willie, really? the question is do I do a separate uh, channel for my digital or do I do the digital on this channel as well? Would you rather it see on a different channel? And second part of the question would you follow me on that other channel as well? John says more than likely, so that's cool. And so separate. So right now I'm looking at three separates and no one channel. So 
that's pretty good. So it gives me an indication that you would rather see just airbrush work and maybe a little pastel here on this channel and maybe digital on another channel. So that's good. It's good to hear that, guys. So I appreciate it. Okay, so a little cleanup over here on the side of her face. Oh, thank you. Uh, Willie, Willie says it doesn't matter. He'll follow me anyways. So that's good to know, my friend. Willie's been with me since a duration, like uh, like Wendy. Well, not when you knew, not in, since 2008 when I started, but when I started in earnest again in 2017, you guys were with me most of the time. But you see, we're, we're getting a little better as far as the turning of the forms, which I like. So this painting is coming out very soft and kind of took its own, had its own life, you know? And that's okay. Sometimes you can come in with the actual pastel stick if you want to do like the most powerful of lights. That's okay. That was a little ardent, don't you think? Let's go ahead and calm that down. So Tom says that uh, separate. Wendy says we're behind you. Thank you, Wendy. Hey, Bradley, how you doing, my friend? Good to see you. So glad you made it. Bradley and I are working on a portrait of his mom, which is coming out pretty good. And then Wendy and Bradley are working on a portrait of Greta Garber with me in my digital art class, which is really cool. Remember, every painting is pretty much, uh, every painting pretty much, uh, you know, sort of goes its own direction at times. So Willie says, Tim, will you be doing any of the Jessa work on the channel? If you'd like, would you guys like to see my, uh, my mixture and how I do the mixture and, uh, you know, how do I make a board? Would you like to see a live stream of that? be interesting I would have to do it in the in the uh, kitchen area that would be cool oh cool so Wendy says she jumped in and doing color trying to get it smooth very cool so that's that's good so definitely I'm gonna do that I think I think we'll definitely do a pastel uh, a pastel painting, uh, a portrait. I think that would work well. I don't advocate coming in with the white pastel here in the darks. I mean, I've been working in pastels my whole life, so I can probably get away with it uh, because you'll have a really wicked blue shift if you're not careful. So, so I know just how to calm it down. So that point don't do what I do just do what I say when it comes to that because I think that could really screw up your work so I don't want that to happen oh 
Oh, Brad says she's looking awesome. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that a lot. Now we can always, once we get the, you know, the amount of pastel we want, we still have to assimilate that into the form. See that? So your work's not done when you apply the pastel to the surface. And now you have to shape the form. And we'll, let's see if we can solve the problem with the eraser first. And if not, we'll come in with the airbrush with the light mixture. But it's just a little bit darker on this side of this frown here. Light mixture here in my extreme paint treat arrow. So pretty interesting news. Uh, I have an article that came out in the Airbrush Step-by-Step -step magazine in Germany. So it's in the German version, uh, German language version of the magazine. And I think next month it comes out in English. So that's pretty exciting. So uh, when I do get my own copy, I'm going to show you guys. And the cool thing is that, you know, I talked about the ink mixtures, and I'm not sure if they put in, but I did mention about, you know, our group and everything like that, so that's cool. I'm a good distance away because I don't want to go too dark with that, but I do want to establish it just a little bit. Thanks, Willie. I appreciate that, my friend. Let's see if we could calm down this light here. I'm about four inches away from, I'm just doing a dusting over here, over her shoulder. And working on her clavicle layer, let me darken. Just a tad. There we go. Thanks, Raul. I appreciate that, my friend. Let's see, I did drop my, wow, look at that. So I actually dropped my Extreme Patriot Arrow and I was lucky that it did not get bent. The needle didn't bend. So that's a bit of luck, you know, so that's cool. So we have the light mixture in here. I'm just gonna extend this frown line a little bit. Just a little bit. There we go. Just like that. I'm going to continue working. Now what's happening is when you have two airbrushes, you got to be careful of the lines getting tangled. That's my problem. I'm not saying that you guys would have that problem, 
but I have to watch that because that happens to me. So just be wary of that. I'm going to extend this dark so it doesn't look like a scar. Extend that all the way up and just sort of fade that out like that. And then on this side, it's a little bit darker. So yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a separate channel and it's going to be, you know, on all digital digital programs, at least the ones that I'm working on. And, you know, I think, I mean, it would be great if you, you know, if you have a tablet or if you have an iPad with Procreate on it and the Apple Pen, you know, you can definitely uh, get a lot from it. And that's the whole thing is that you can get a lot from it. It's important a lot of times to make sure when you're working, you're not just, you know, have, you know, tunnel vision and just working on one area. You know, notice how I'm moving around. I'm not staying in one area. That will mean a difference between your work looking like a painting or looking like, uh, you know, a billboard or something like that. If you wanted to have that fine art look, whatever it is. Uh, so Willie says he picks up the wrong brush and paint and oh that happened, yes. Exactly. I can't say that hasn't happened to me because it has, my friend. continue to make her neck uh, three-dimensional here. Still with the light mixture. Make sure we get rid of any weird shapes in here. there'll be some cleanup with this painting off camera. Okay, so now we can maybe concentrate on moving this light from, from her forehead to her eyes to her nose and now to her lips. So let's make that happen. Let's make this, I think we're good at that value we we're at. And let's, let's blow up on the lips, shall we? Let's see. Getting into the nitty gritty or the round, the round, what is it? The home stretch. That's it. Follow the grain of the lips when you can. Try not to have things equidistant or the same shape when you can.
If you see it's a little ardent, a little strong, then you can just calm it down by tapping with the humidity eraser. Pulling up some little pieces that don't belong. And then you can come back in with your light mixture. And you can hit on some of the dark. Just like so. Oh, uh, Bradley says color code here. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know, or maybe some way marking them when you're working, uh, which is the dark mixture, which is the light mixture sort of thing. That's not a bad idea. Now, when we're doing individual parts of the lips, we just got to make sure that we are not breaking things up too much. Now let's do the corresponding dark right next to it. Where we want to lighten things up, we just increase our distance. Just a little variation. We don't want to go crazy. Just a little bit, guys and girls. says you can't work on the tablet. It's great for working on reference picture, but I don't think I can actually create with it, but that's just me. One of these days, Willie, I'm going to do a uh, free class, and uh, once I do a live stream, uh, I just, maybe we can work on that. You know, maybe I could just, uh, just give me one chance, right, Willie, to See if we can do something that you would be happy with, you know? Ah, there's the teeth. Now they're coming. Now they are coming. There they are. They've been hiding on me all painting. Kind of waited to the end, huh? Sometimes paintings will do that for you. They'll do that to you. They'll just play with you to the end. See if you are tenacious enough to keep going. That's why I say never get emotional whether it's looking good or not good. Be like a bulldog or a wolverine or a badger and just keep going paint pissed you know you gotta be half pissed off to paint let's see how it looks guys yep I like it, but a little too crazy on this side, so I'm just going to calm it down. Because remember, we got to have that feeling of the lips turning, you know? And if we don't have that feeling, that's not good. So we definitely, just like the forehead, we have to turn 
we have to turn as well. Willie says he's willing to try, but it takes me forever to find a brush. Well, that's something we're going to work on together, Willie, because I have a method where I think it really does help. And Willie and Brad can, uh, I mean, uh, Wendy and Brad are taking my class, and they can attest that, you know, it's just the same kind of method that I have for simplifying airbrush. I try to do that with digital. So definitely, uh, we'll see if we can turn that around for you, Willie. Steve, definitely uh, coming together with the uh, doing digital portraits, you know, in my style, and I think it's pretty interesting. So I'm, um, you know, I'm gonna have a separate channel, and uh, we're gonna do live streams where we do this, but in digital, digital using various programs, you know. So it's it's gonna be great. to see you. Steve Pratt says the digital lessons are great. Uh, Willie is, says he was skeptical that it wasn't going to be able to do it, but oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Steve definitely yeah it's gonna be fun so I'll let you guys know I'm gonna do a one a live stream and then of course you know I'll have my regular lessons that you guys could always join in on uh, but definitely you know I'm gonna want to ease into it I'll do I'm gonna start a live stream so I'll let you guys know uh, when that does happen So I have been, you know, and you, a lot of people when they see my digital paintings, it's have a hard time deciphering my digital from my regular. Even my mom said, you know, oh, your latest uh, digital, and I'm like, no, mom, that that was a regular. And then she says, oh, that's a nice digital painting. I'm like, no, mom, that's my regular painting. So if my mom doesn't know my own variation, you know. So yeah, it's uh, pretty wild. So we're in the closing stages of this particular painting as far as the live stream goes. I'll do some more off camera to finish this up. But yeah, this is pretty much the finishing of this particular piece. It's an emotional piece and being so emotional, it wasn't easy. I think there's a spiritual quality to painting and I think each painting does have a spirituality to it. And uh, what do you guys feel that? What's that? I'll pose that question to you guys. You guys feel that some paintings have a spirit about it, and this one, this one was a heavy spirit. It's you know, it, not a heavy spirit, but it was very. A, I felt a heaviness painting this picture. You know, I really did.
<laughs> the pit pastels, yes. Hey, thanks so much, Brad, for coming by. Always fantastic. I hope you have a great evening, sir. Yeah, we're getting to the end of this particular live stream. So you guys like the live streams, go ahead and hit that like button for Tim. I just like seeing the like buttons. You know, I like seeing that I have 15 likes, 20 likes, and subscribe. And so this way you won't miss the new uh, videos coming out. I don't just do live streams. I sneak in a recorded video every now and then. Also, I have a blog, and you can see that at my website, paintingcliffs.com. Yes, definitely. It did take all six live streams, definitely. And, and and Steve says, very emotional, yeah. This is an emotional piece, and, uh, you know, and it was very emotional painting it. And I just want to thank the artist for, photographer, for giving me the opportunity to work from his amazing, amazing work. You know, that was really wonderful of him. And I just, hopefully I have his name somewhere around here. Hopefully. Let's see. Do I have his name here? If not, I'll be sure to put a link in the description. And just, you know, so we can go and look at his artwork, his photography. Photography is art, okay? That's uh, my stance. I really feel that's the case. Photography is definitely art. And I know you guys agree with me out there. Yeah, see me Friday. That's great. Friday is my appropriate class, so that's going to be fun. And yeah, this one did take all, <laughs> all of the live streams, you know. Uh, it, it's just like I said, some, some paintings have a heaviness to it. And uh, this one did. And, uh, you know, when you paint emotion, it's, uh, you're going to feel it. You paint happiness, you're gonna feel it. Uh, you paint anxiety, you're gonna feel it. My screen paintings, I feel that anxiety. Maybe that's what I, that's definitely what what drew me to the pose in the first place, because you naturally feel that anxiety. Um, Very true tone, right? They definitely do. They definitely have their own emotions, and you know it takes. You know it does take something from you. You know you have to put yourself into your work. If you're not putting yourself emotionally in your work, then you're doing your work in yourself a disservice. And put your emotions into it. Look for paintings and poses that pretty much are talking about what you're going through. I think that's important. That's another really quick thing we only have a few minutes left I was talking about you know creativity creativity is not in the mode of painting the mode of painting is innovation but in the planning and what pose you pick and and how you change it in Photoshop uh, you know the edges and the background that's where the creativity is and then innovation in this so pick paintings that you feel akin to you know you feel the emotion you feel, uh, pick subjects that you feel something towards, okay? It's so important, and I really can't stress how important it really is. Uh, it just, it's just really important. So as you can see, uh, this is her, and I really think that, you know, it might not be my technical best painting, but I really feel that I did catch the emotion. And if I can pick the two, whether or not to be technical powerhouse, or whether or not I'm gonna hit get that emotion, every time I'm gonna pick the emotion. Steve says yes, true, I agree that. And uh, you know, oh, I'm so glad, because I think that's, thank you Steve for saying that, and Willie, thank, thank you for your time, sir. So, with painting and emotion, and that's, that's what we, 
we have on the gut level, you know? So when we're, let's say, hanging in a gallery or museum one day, which painting are you going to stop? Are you going to stop and look at, you know, aristocratic person who is all stoic and, you know, on a horse? Or are you going to look at someone who maybe is going through something like this? And uh, thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. That comes a, really means a lot to me. And, uh, and guys, so it is 11.30. So I gave you the two full hours as I always do because you guys are worth it. And I say it every week because I mean it every week. Thank you so much for spending Wednesday with me. I really appreciate it. This is it. Uh, so <laughs> we did it, right? Uh, this painting's called Emotion. So always fantastic to hang out. I hope you have a great night. Take care of yourselves. And hopefully all this uh, COVID-19 stuff will be ending soon.